Welcome to Long Covid Doctor, an educational series for sufferers of Long Covid. I'm Dr Tim Robinson, formerly a family doctor, a GP for 30 years, now GP lead for three NHS Long Covid clinics and a GP clinical lead in Long Covid across the southwest of England. This episode is on eye problems and Long Covid. In it, I talk about the symptoms, the diagnoses and causes of those eye problems. Check out the references and resources and the links in social media in the show notes below. Just to say, any advice, diagnoses, treatments that I mention should only be considered after discussion with your own doctor uh, or medically qualified health professional. And so here we go. Eye problems and long COVID. It has to be said that eye problems in long COVID are uncommon. Nevertheless, there are some patients who have been reporting changes and difficulties that have been troubling them since they had acute COVID. And so therefore, that is now part of their long COVID. So what are the patients experiencing? There are a number of symptoms such as eye irritation, dryness, watering. Some patients have a deep orbital retrobulba pain. Others complain of difficulties with focusing, double vision, blind spots or rarely complete one-sided blindness. So how do we approach these problems? As always, it's important to get the whole story, both the symptoms, uh, what exactly the patient is experiencing, but also the history, when it all started. Was it with the acute infection or at some time thereafter? Then it's on to the examination to look at the outer eye appearance, look for redness or discharge, um, maybe even a subconjunctival hemorrhage, so bleeding on the, on the white of the eyeball. And then the eye movements need to be examined. Are they full and equal? And then the pupils, uh, they need to be checked to see if that they're reacting to light normally. And then it's on to examining the back of the eye, the retina with an ophthalmoscope. Uh, where the you know the retina where the light is detected and also the blood vessels on the retina looking for any hemorrhages and then finally the optic nerve itself that carries all the nerve impulses to the visual cortex at the back of the brain to be processed. The visual fields are usually checked to look for blind spots or you know even large areas and finally, the visual acuity, the eye chart with all the letters on it to check for focusing. So that's the examination. We also need to know about the past medical history with the eyes. Is there, for example, glaucoma, a history of glaucoma? And hence, you know, is the patient using eye drops? And also, we want to know the general history to ask all the questions for you know any conditions that that can have an effect on the eyes such as diabetes or blood pressure or heart disease we want to know all these things and finally we want to be thinking about possible red flags in other words signs and symptoms that suggest something more sinister in need of urgent medical attention so these red flags would be sort of sudden onset blindness or flashing lights, double vision. As I said, these are all red flags that should be taken seriously and referred to a specialist immediately. Having gone through all those checks and processes, we're left with our patient who has eye problems ever since having COVID, which is now obviously their long COVID. And so, what are those problems? 
for simplicity's sake, I've divided them into five separate categories. So they are the outer eye, the eye muscles, the retina, the optic nerve, and finally the brain, the brain itself. And I'll sort of go through each in turn. So firstly, the outer eye, the external eye. You can have inflammation of the outer eye layers, such as conjunctivitis or keratitis or uveitis. These are all consequences of the acute COVID infection that has just persisted and still causing redness and irritation, weepiness and discharge um, and also, also discomfort. And then secondly, the eye muscles themselves. These are served by the cranial nerves, the third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves. They may have been knocked out in the acute COVID illness, usually singly. This is known as mononeuropathy, um, leading to double vision or even a squint. And uh, whilst we're still on sort of the eye muscles, there's the pupillary muscle that may have been affected. So the pupillary muscle is the muscle that controls the opening and closing of the eye pupil. If this is affected, it will lead to difficulties in focusing. And then thirdly, the retina. Um, there may have been a retinal or vitreous detachment or occlusion of a retinal artery or vein. Any of those can result in a blind sort of blackout area in the visual field. Now on to fourthly, the optic nerve that carries the light impulses from the retina to the area in the brain that processes um, the signals and gives us vision, the ability, to see, the ability to see. That nerve, the optic nerve, can be inflamed, uh, a process known as optic neuritis, or the blood supply, the blood supply to the optic nerve may have been cut off, again, in the pro COVID process. Um, uh, leading to blindness in that eye. And finally, the brain. The area in the brain where light impulses are processed is the occipital cortex at the back of the brain. That may have been affected by a stroke, which obviously therefore leads to blindness. And whilst we're still thinking about the brain, I wanted to briefly mention brain fog. As we all know, brain fog is one of the cardinal features of long COVID. This too can lead to visual disturbance. So patients tell us they have difficulties with focusing. And so there's bound to be a, an overlap of visual along with mental effects causing these focusing difficulties in our long COVID patients. So, having covered all those presentations and conditions and diagnoses, it leads to the obvious question, why? Why are there visual problems in some of our long COVID patients? It's obviously complex as is everything in long COVID, but the causes must be a mixture of all those processes that we are now familiar with in long COVID. So just a quick reminder, there's the excessive inflammation of the blood vessels, which leads to changes in the blood supply to any of those structures that I've mentioned in the eye. And there's the high probability of microclots again, anywhere in those eye tissues and its blood supply. Um, 
And there's also the thought that an autoimmune process may be occurring, leading to uveitis. That's inflammation of the middle lining of the outer eye. So any of these problems, these long COVID problems, may be happening either on their own, singly, or in combination in one of the five areas that I listed earlier, or in all of those five areas, or some or all of those five areas collectively. So, as I've said, it's complex, but that's long COVID. Regardless of this, it's happened, but what do we do about it? Obviously, we want to seek advice, our eyesight is, after all, very dear to us. And so reporting visual disturbances or changes to our GP, family doctor, is so important. This will probably lead on to a referral to an eye specialist, an ophthalmologist, and quite rightly so. Often there is very little that can be done, especially if it is due to a blocked, blocked blood vessel or a stroke but it's important to have a diagnosis and management plan, nevertheless. My hope and feeling is that with time, the visual problem clears with natural healing and replacement of damaged tissues, along with the settling, rebalancing of the inflammatory and immune systems. Also, part of the natural homeostatic healing processes. Research studies certainly backs this up. If, however, you've been unlucky and the damage is due to a stroke, repair and restoration is less likely, sadly. But, as I said, the experience worldwide is that long COVID visual problems on the whole, settle with time. And I hope this is the case for each and every one of you. And so that concludes my talk on eye problems and long COVID. I hope you found that helpful. So as I've said before, check out the references, resources and links to social media in the show notes below if you should so wish. As always, my usual disclaimer, my any advice, diagnoses, treatments that I mention should only be considered after discussion with your own doctor or medically qualified health professional. In the meantime, I wish you well. I wish you well with your long COVID recovery. Cheerio.